You denied VK popular views of PDP members, Autumn tells Atiku. And save APC from collapse, Buhari begs aggrieved senators. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anakon. In the wake of speculations that Governor Yesum Wike made the camp to another party, Governor Samuel Autumn of Benue State asked the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Abubakar Atiku, to reach out to the River State Governor. Autumn, who expressed worry that Atiku denied Wike of the popular views of the PDP members, stated that he expected Atiku to have reached out to Wike on the grounds that he finished second in the PDP presidential primaries. In the same vein, former Ekiti State Governor and Chieftain of the People's Democratic Party, Ayo Fayoshi, has said it was the turn of the South to produce the country's president in 2023, in a move many have interpreted as a support for Bola Tinubu, the APC presidential candidate. In his tweet, Fayoshi also affirmed that his party, the PDP, recognizes rotational presidency between the North and the South, adding that it is the Nigerian president from the South in 2023 or nothing. Well, joining me to discuss this tonight are uh, Chris Itamanola. He is the former commissioner for information in River State and Dayo Kayade, who is a political technocrat. But we'll start with you. Good evening, Mr. Uh, Kayade, and thank you for joining us. Yes, good evening, Mary Ann. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. Um, this, this surfacing of the, the, the tweet of Aya Fayashi and, of course, the interview that was granted by the Benue State Governor, Samuel Autumn, seemed to have uh, riled a lot of people and, of course, um, gotten a lot of reactions. But I'll start with what, where, where, what, you, what you have to say about the video or the interview that was granted by the Benue State Governor. Why do you think that he took that step to make those statements? Yes, uh, Governor Autumn of Benue State is somebody I've always had very, very lofty respect for. And for him to have uh, uttered that out shows that he is a party man, a PDP to the core. Because definitely, when there is an election or nomination, Everybody wants to occupy that particular position. But only one person can be chosen. There's no doubt about it that when one person is chosen, others might feel aggrieved. To that extent, there is need to reach out to whoever is aggrieved. And to that extent, for Governor Otto, to advise PDP to reach out to Governor Wiki is a very, very good development. And I ever think that before that is a, a statement, the PDP leadership had taught it that they are going to send a strong delegation to appeal to Governor Yeso Wiki, and which is, to me, is in a good uh, 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 direction. Because whether anybody likes it or not, to the extent that Governor Wike could control the number of delegates he was able to control at the national convention, means that he is a strong PDP person to be reckoned with. And, and as, as a, a, a Nigerian, as a Nigerian, I will equal, make my own appeal too, to Governor Wike, to stay online within the PDP fold. Hmm. Uh, you, you have already gone further to think that maybe there might be a move for Governor Wiki, but he had made mention of the fact that he's a PDP man who's not going anywhere. He's going to stay within the party. But let, yeah. me, let me move to some of the statements credited to Governor Samuel Autumn. He said, and I quote, 
I'm, I'm waiting for him, that's Atiku, uh, because there are more things he's expected to do. I expected him to reach out to Wike, who came second, and he denied him the popular view of PDP members. 14, he said, out of 17 members say that Wike should be the VP, but in his wisdom, he chose Governor Okoa. He said, Okoa is a nice man and he's my friend. I have no problem with him, but if we're in a democratic era, and 14 out of 17 say that it should be Wike, and Atiku in his wisdom gave it to Okoa. I expect more explanation. And so I ask, does the, vice, the former vice president not have the right to choose who he feels would better work with him, as opposed to popular opinion, which Governor Samuel Autumn is making reference to? And if he does have a right to, why the row? Are you still with me? Yes. Did you hear my question? Yes. Uh, is it? I meant to. I meant to also reply to that. Yes. 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 Now you see, either we like it or not, uh, the PDP had given uh, uh, Atiku Abubakar the flag of the party to represent them as the presidential candidate during the 2023 election. And to a very large extent, he has, yes, he has the right to choose the person that will be his running mate. But it, he has to consult the leaders of the party to be able to choose a running mate so that the party will be intact. But in a situation, the PDP is now, whereby, whereby the statistics as regards who should be the running mate or who should be the running mate is a, is a sort of causes of disaffection. It behoves, it behoves on uh, uh, His Excellency Atiku Abubakar to hold that party together. And how do you hold the party together? By reaching out to others that are feeling decimated. You have to reach out to them and bring them back to the fold and give them the confidence that when eventually the party wins the presidency, everybody will be included in, in the formation of government. So, and even before uh, 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 Governor Uto proposed that, uh, Alaji Atiku Abubakar had said it, had even discussed with the National Working Committee that they should set up a strong delegation to go and meet Governor Yeson Wiki. That is that. Then on Governor Yeson Wiki, is somebody that I have high regards for. You know why? Because whatever he says he's going to do, he's going to do it. If Governor Wicke should tell you that, good morning, you need not look at Tori Swatch. He has said that he is the party person that is not going to leave PDP. So I strongly believe that he is not going to leave PDP. But then, but then, we, uh, uh, party, party should reach out to him. The leadership of the party should reach out to him so that he will be able to have I mean, to perform effectively in the coming electioneering campaigns. But it's one thing for somebody to be in PDP, it's another thing for him not to be effective. Look at what uh, former governor of the Kitty State is doing, the PDP in the Kitty State. Even though he regards himself as, a, as a, a, a PDP man, but look at what he's doing between PDP and NPC. So, the PDP, the PDP leadership should quickly reach out to Governor Wiki so that he, while he is mine, his soul, and his body will work with PDP come 2023 general elections. Now let's look at other issues. Um, Governor Autumn went on to say that he was one of those people who, uh, one of the 17 or, you know, 14 out of the 17 who were rooting uh, for the vice presidency of um, Governor Yeston Wiki. And he said, I'd like to quote him, that we needed Wiki to be vice president so that he can bridge the gap. Now I'm wondering, 
Um, do you think that Governor Wiki had, has the power, has what it takes, uh, you know, the strategies to be able to bridge the gap? Because it's not just the South-South that is concerned here. It's about winning votes across the country. Again, many people, many pundits have said that he's more presidential than a vice president. And we know that vice presidents are supposed to be yes men, in quote. Um, do you think that he is most of a presidential personality than a vice president? And do you think, do you agree that he would have been the one, in the words of Governor Autumn, to bridge the gap between the North and the South? Between, between you and me, Governor Yeso Wiki has all the qualities to be the running mate to, to Alaji Atiku. He has what it takes to be the vice president of the country. But then, just as he has all it takes, some other people too are having the same qualities to be the running mates. As regards bridging the gap between the north and the south, there is none of the governors in south, south, and southeast now that cannot that cannot stand in that gap but but i think what really what really played out was uh, uh, as looking at uh, the southeast towards pacifying the southeastern region if you look at and you th Obola, I'm sorry, Mr. Kayade, and you think that Mr. Wike would not be able to bridge the gap between the southeast and the south south? Is that what you're saying? That a governor of Koa is most appealing? Say? Are you insinuating that a governor of Koa is most appealing to the southeast as opposed to Inge Song Wike? No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. They they all can, you know, they all can. Who, all those people, all those people that are insinuating this and insinuating that, they are just there. They are just there as a, as a political uh, uh, troublemakers. Do you understand? They, they, they are trying to denigrate. They are trying to denigrate the personality of Yusuf Wiki so that he could he could be angry to leave PDP. We okay. all know this. They, they, they are all political statements. Okay. Between you and me, you should look at his performances in his state. During his first term and second term, you will, you will, give, him, you will give him a very, very high pass mark. Okay. All right. When you also look at his comportment at any point in time, the way, the way he handled issues, you will give him a very, very high pass mark. Okay. But the thing is, Two people cannot occupy one particular position at the same time. All right. I, I'm, uh, all right. I'm going to come back to you, Mr. Kayade. Just, just hold that thought. Just hold that thought. Uh, Mr. Kayade, just hold the thought. I have, I have another guest. Um, um, we're being joined by the information, former information commissioner at, uh, for River State, um, Mr. Chrissy Tamanola. Mr. Tamanola, thank you so much for joining us. Nice to meet you. Nice to be on air. I'm live on air. Great. Um, now, you worked under Governor Yusum Wike, and of course, you would understand um, why, where the governor of Benue State is coming from. Now, uh, for some people, he um, made an <clears throat> assertion that party men should not necessarily make. Now, especially for the fact that... Um, the vice president, former vice president Atiku Abubakar, had said he was going to constitute a committee of sorts to appeal to the conscience of Governor Wike. But looking at what he said, and I'd like to quote um, Governor Aya Fayeshe, who said that Wike never said he wanted to be VP, but when Atiku visited him, he was the one who said, I want you to be my VP. This is according to um, the former governor of Ekiti State, uh, Aya Fayeshe. He said that... <coughs> If that, that then changes, why has a former Vice President Atiku Abubakar not been able to reach out to Governor Wiki? Is it true that there's not been a conversation after everything that happened um, during and after uh, the PDP convention? Look, there, 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 could, there could be no better way 
to debase a man other than the manner in which my governor had been treated. Let me state in very categorical terms. I work with him. I've worked with him for the past seven years. And I know Governor Ye Sonwike. If you, if a man who got 237 votes, where did they come from? They cut across the length and breadth of the nation called Nigeria. And but for the standing down, the stepping down of Tamwa, the governor of Sokoto State, we all know what will have happened. Now, if a man could be that good, and you now consider that he wasn't good enough to be able to be your vice, that's point one. The second point is, for example, I've, I've taken time to listen to my colleague, my brother that is talking on the other side, I don't know him, but for him to say that the comments that are being made is by political jobbers. That means that I'm a political, uh, that means that I'm a political jobber. It's an unfortunate statement. I'd like to let you know, just like you stated, if you compose a, co a committee, 17 month panel, to come up with a decision. And of course, as a member of the PDP, I'm aware that a vice, a presidential candidate cannot in last time take a decision. And that was why he proposed and submitted himself that, choose me, choose me a vice presidential candidate. And if at the end of the day, 14 out of 17 give the fit to say that we should be, even if you purpose to take a contrary opinion, prior to that particular time, what should you have done? You should, just like uh, uh, the governor of uh, Bender State had stated, at least held this man in high esteem, single-handedly, we can held this party from 2014. In terms of financial capacity, in terms of, look at what happened in the 2019 uh, PDP convention. The, the, the current presidential candidate is just coming in, coming from another party. Of course, we are not against that. But if you want to do something, let there be equity. So everybody who is saying that, and you know, what makes uh, this most embarrassing is when Atiku was going to make the public statement, I wish that he hadn't made that statement that he made, that he chose Okowa on the basis of the fact that he had looked and he had a presidential, a future presidential capacity. Also, the other two candidates lack that uh, ability. It's most unfortunate. Uh, it is so painful. And whatever decision that, whatever decision my governor will take today, the rest are short. Number one, we'll stand behind him, we'll stand by him, and it is definitely going to affect the fortunes of PDP, if not in the north, at least in the south. Those who are saying, does a man, does one man make a, make, make, make a forest? You will see examples of that area. You can uh, see that, of course, at the moment now there is already cross capital and whatsoever. Uh, we I, do uh, not need this Mr. Tamuna, uh, Mr. Tamuna, are, are you insinuating yes. that Governor Wike may leave the party? Because he succinctly said to us, and I remember, no. that he was never going to leave uh, the party. He would stand by his party. But this statement you just made has some patches on it that seems that, like the uh, governor is about to uh, make a move of sorts. Do you have a, an information? No. My dear lady, I am not Governor Wiki, but one thing that is uh, what, uh, the constant in life is a uh, change. Hmm. Governor Wiki could have made a statement to say he's not going to move. But of course, look at the um, extenuating circumstances. Look at the, look at, listen to the comment of uh, the Niger, uh, former Niger State Governor. I mean, you see, of course, no matter what, uh, how much we try to build the house, if at a particular point in time you discover that you are not wanted in a particular place, you've got to weigh the options and whatsoever. I know that my governor is very is an astute thinker. And when he takes a decision, it's definitely going to be a right decision. So for now, he hasn't taken that decision. For now, he hasn't said anything. But when eventually it, he does, and in the event that he takes the decision to, to step out of the party, Definitely, you can be sure that as many of us 
that are within will definitely still stand by him. All right, let me ask you another question. And I want to go back to the former governor of Ekiti State, Ayafayashi, and what he said again. He said, and I quote, Wike cannot come out to say he's supporting Atiku. He said, I dare him to, to say so, because he knows that whatever he says... I didn't get that. Say that again. Well, he said, and I quote, Wike cannot come out to say that he supports Atiku. And then he went on to say that he dares Governor Wike to say so, because he knows that whatever he says will haunt him forever. And he says, if Wike supports Atiku, we will all abandon him. Does this mean that there is no pacifying whatsoever? That there might never be a handshake across the table to douse this tension that seems to be brewing? Is that the case right now? Well, um, governor, former governor of the Ekiti State Power has spoken his own mind. But one thing I know is that the governor of River State, Nye Soezo Wike, is a man, an astral thinker. And um, if he has to, you see, he does. He, I, I, I can assure you one thing. Wike does not have any challenge with the personality of Atiku, but he definitely has challenge with his policies. He definitely will have a challenge in terms of his uh, methodology. And if, uh, what they call, and Wike is a person that also, in taking a decision, takes into consideration the feelings of others. So if he has a team, if he has a team, and four or is in that team, and some others are in that team, before he takes any decision, it's not going to be unilateral. Mm -hmm. But one thing is certain, when he eventually takes that decision, whether it's going to be within or outside, it will be, a best, it will be the, in the best interest of okay. um, he and his followers. All right, quickly, let me toss back to um, Mr. Kayade. Um, you heard the former Commissioner for Information in River State and what he has to say. He has not necessarily minced words tonight. So I'd like to hear from you, Mr. Kayade. Do you see a disintegration yes, uh, of the PDP going forward if something is not done in the interim? And how will this affect the fortunes of the PDP, being that they are uh, up against the opposition and, of course, the obedience? Yeah, in the first instance, let me quickly correct the impression with my dear barista that uh, I never, I have never said that he is a political jobber. And I'm not referring to him anyway. I'm referring to those that are bringing up statements that are highly sentimental, that are highly destructive within the polity, and not him. I will say that. You see, Governor, Governor Jason Wike is a political enigma within this country, either anybody likes it or not. He is somebody that uh, has been very, very active and, and a lover of the people. All right? I've been following him since, uh, since uh, when, when he was sworn in as the governor for the first time. But then, looking at the situation between him and Atiku now, I will just want to tell Barista, as one of his aides, one of the people that he believes in, to let him know there is no perfect human being. Thank God, no perfect human being. Thank God he said he has, he has no problem with Atiku's personality, rather his type of politics. But then, the two of them, can he come to a round table? and have a, a hand of fellowship across the table. Because for me, I want a Nigeria that will settle down politically. Because we need to move forward. We need to, we need to push away those that have reneged on their promises. And a single tree can never make a forest. No matter how popular uh, uh, article is, he cannot win election alone. Okay. No matter how strong a general is, he will never want to lose any of his lieutenants. And lastly. So, I will still continue to say that Aladi Atiku Abubakar should, as a matter of urgency, set up a high-power delegation to go and have a serious discussion okay. with uh, 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 yes of Wiki of right. River State. And by that, he will be, he will be sure of garnering enough votes. 
to okay. take him to Asolo, call 23. All right, our time is fast spent. I want to say thank you to the former commissioner for information, River State, Chris Itamanola, and of course, Daya Kayade, who is a political technocrat. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. It's our pleasure thank being here. Very thank very you very much. much. All I'm right. Not, I'm not, uh, I'm just to correct. Our special advisor, not commissioner. Your special thank advisor. You All right. Thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank we appreciate you. it. All right. Um, let's move to the second segment. As we take this break, when we come back, we will be talking about what's also happening within the APC as the president has begged the senators not to break the party. We'll be right back.